Oh, the famous mod category. What are you doing over there? Ugh. The famous mod category of other and random. Um, this is the mod category of stuff that I'm really not even sure where to put it. So it's just going to get stuck over here. We do sort of have a tanker category and sort of a something category. Okay, so let's start with this. This is our um, sort of a uh, service service pad. Um, it has everything you need. Fuel, uh, fertilizer, uh, seeds, and, and spray, and everything you need you could possibly want. Expensive as the dickens. But, and expensive on a daily basis, I think it's $300 a day to, to maintain this rig. But, if you have a huge farm, Westbridge Hills, Duke Farming, Paradise, a 16x or a 8x map or a 4x map, this could save your bacon because you have this out by your big fields and then there you go. But wait, you say, what about the hook lift pack? Well, the hook lift pack gets you most of the way there. It's got seeds. Does it have seeds? I don't remember. The hook lift pack gets you two of the four, basically. And then you get a fuel bowser out there, and that gets you another one. And then, well, you really do either need fertilizer or spray. You don't need both. So the question is, do you really need this? And my answer is probably not at the price point that it sits at. I'm going to give it a mention. It's a decent piece of equipment. You know what? I'm going to give it an honorable mention even. It's a decent piece of equipment. It does a job really well. It does start clipped in, but that's you can fix that. You just reset it. Um, yeah, I'll give it an honorable mention. It's just a little bit too expensive for my taste. Um, but your taste may vary. Uh, let's skip that one for a minute. Uh, here's part of the the Grampy trailer pack. It's a water trailer. Great. It works. You put water in it and water comes out. And The cool thing is if you go back to the back here, see if I can get... Uh, oh, I guess I actually have to have it hooked up. Anyway, um, you can come back here and you open up these panels and it's, it's pretty cool. And I like it. I think it's a good little trailer. Um, it, is, it is bumper pull, not, um, not fifth wheel. Or, or semi-pole, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> it's a good water trailer. Can't really think of reviewing a better water trailer at this point. So we're going to go with uh, an award for water trailers. Because why? Well, what else have I reviewed in water trailers? This is one of those placeable not placeables. <laughs> this is a front loader ramp. You come up here with an empty front loader, click it onto there, and then you can carry your ramp around if you want. Which is great. Because maybe you need to just move a ramp for a minute. Put something somewhere. Whatever. Um, I'm going to give it an award. I mean, it's... Actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to give it an award. I'm going to give it a dishonorable mention. <laughs> How do you like that? Going from the top to nearly the bottom. I'm going to give it a dishonorable mention because in order to load this in, I had to edit the XML from 2011 to 2013 Farming Sim in one spot. The mod author... Pro forgot one thing and I don't know how this made it past any sort of QA check because probably there was no QA check one thing has to change if that one thing has changed this can load in the game and this becomes a great tool um, but yeah so I'm just gonna say dishonorable mention we're gonna check your mods make sure they work people before you release some make sure they work uh, I like it though I wish it worked better and I didn't have to edit all right uh, milk tankers we've got Duke Farming's milk We've got the Crampy Milk. Sounds like I'm saying something else, but I'm not. And then the milk tanker that we've had for the longest time has been just this Milch trailer here. Buy the Milch trailer. Um, and it's a cool little thing because you can hit a little button and it, he, you hook up the hose and it comes out. And it, it looks really great. Doesn't carry a lot. That carries a lot more. That carries even more. Hmm. So, um, I think this one is going to be... Hmm. Actually, this one is going to be a three-way award because I see no reason to split this. You've got the Mills trailer for a small farm. You've got the Crampy trailer for a medium farm. And then you've got the Duke farming trailer for the big farm. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? you got three different... Yeah, I think that makes beautiful sense. So a three-way award there. Uh, milk trailers are, are a dime a dozen. And actually, water trailers usually work for the same same thing. So 
There you go. And the, or the milk trailers work as water trailers. However you want to go about it. But um, yeah, three-way award for the milk trailers. The, old, the milk trailer for a small farm. Grampy for a medium farm. Duke farming for a large farm. Dishonorable mention for the ramp because you actually have to edit the XML to make it work. Award for the water trailer because, well, it's the only water trailer I've covered of any note. And then a honorable mention to this giant um, service trailer. It's a good service trailer. I just wish it wasn't so bleeding expensive. You can... You can do most of this with a fuel bowser and hook lift pack. There you go. All right, we'll be back in our next mod category. All right, here we have the mod category of... Placeables. <laughs> you were wondering what I was doing, weren't you? Um, placeables is a really tough category because there are a lot of really good mods. There's the NI Modding Sheds. There's the Morton Sheds. There's the Water Tower. There's the Breeders. There's the Mill Station. The, the, the Mish Station. So... What we're looking for is something that really adds something to the game that really makes you go, wow, that's neat. The first thing we have is actually a double. It's both a placeable mod and a script. Let's see if I can, oh, I have to actually be in a vehicle. Burp, burp. Oh, there we go. Um, it adds the damage mod. There's no damage to my vehicles. Yay. Make those go away. Um, and this repairs them. You do. You should get the repair vehicle. We'll talk about the repair vehicle in another spotlight uh, or another uh, segment. Um, it it's a good little thing. I mean, it's a neat little shop. You pull your vehicle in. You got your little workbench here. Um, yeah, it's. I, I like the placeable aspect of it. I wish it didn't have the script because you know what? The damage script is just not working well. The problem is you you hook up to a to a piece of equipment and because your tractor jumps when it hits that piece of equipment it causes damage well you did everything right there was nothing you could do because the way the physics of farming simulator 2013 is you're penalized because you hooked up your tractor to something that that doesn't make any sense so i don't think the damage mod is really ready for prime time if giants went out and fixed their physics engine Maybe found what physics was. And put that in 2015. Then bring the damage mod. Let's roll with damage mod. Let's make this as realistic as possible. But right now, I don't think it's ready. I'm going to give this a mention. If you want to try it, try it. But understand it will cost you a lot of money. All right. That's damage mod and the damage mod garage. Next we have, and this is just two of them. There's four of them. There's, there's, this is wool. This is where you can place wool on a, a little rack. It comes in two directions and this is where you can place your harvester heads i like these um because what has always bugged me is i'm waiting for a full full trailer of wool and so i've got wool pallets everywhere well now i can store eight wool pallets away under cover so that when it rains they're not getting wet and the wool isn't getting wet and it makes more sense to me so i like this i think this is great um and I, I give it an award. It's a simple mod. It's sort of like the water tower mod. It's very simple, but it's very functional and very powerful. The header storage. Uh, uh, I can see the benefit. And as long as you're not playing in Westbridge Hills, where you're using those big case heads or the big uh, seven uh, case uh, class 780 TT heads, these will work. You can store your, your heads, though, quite honestly, I, I just store them in a building, honestly. Um, but I'm going to give it an honorable mention because it does sort of the same thing that we get out of the sheep's wool, but the sheep's wool is more of a problem for me than the header storage. The scale, I weigh zero tons. Um, the scale was just kind of a silly mod that I, I started the, se the season with. Um, it works most of the time, though I'm not, I, I've yet to figure out the actual calculation that it's doing. I actually did pull that and tried to run through the calculation. I haven't figured it out. It's more of just a silly mod. Um, and and it, does it add anything to the game? Not really. I'm just going to give it a mention. You know, you, you saw that I kind of stopped using it partway through the season. Um, so I mentioned for the scale. Yeah, the fire mod. Placeable fire. You know what? <laughs> Here's the thing with the fire mod. Some of you are going to be like, yeah, it's stupid. 
but it depends on what you're doing. If you're playing the game, this is worth nothing to you. It's a don't bother. But if you're a YouTuber, and I know there are some YouTubers who watch this, if you're a YouTuber and you're trying to make a story or you're trying to do what we call a machinima where you, you create some something out of the game more than just playing the game, this is a huge tool. I can have a tractor burning. I can have fire trucks. I'd have to go review fire trucks. But I can have fire trucks. I can burn things down. Um, what's neat is if I go in here and I choose a fire, I can set it just there and now when I go back it looks like oh no my building is about to burn I mean it doesn't actually catch my building on fire but it's darn close so for the average farm sim 2013 player this is a don't bother the fire um, if you're a youtuber who's make trying to make a storyline or do something you know really interesting uh, this could be very good. So I'm just going to give it a mention. A mention of fire. <laughs> I believe that's what Prometheus did. He mentioned fire. All right. So mention on fire. A mention on the scale. An honorable mention to the header. Um, oh, look, fire. Uh, an award to the, the wool storage. And a mention to the damage mod and garage. So really only thing that comes out of this that goes with the sheds is that wool storage there. All right. We will be uh, right back in our next mod category. Welcome to the always popular category of front loaders. Why is it popular? Well, because usually I screw something up. But <laughs> there are um, four front loaders really competing here. And what are they competing against? Well, not much. Uh, we have the Bobcat, but the Bobcat is its own special category. We've got the Cat excavator and cat front loader but that's also its own category that's front loaders like true like industrial size front loaders not tractors that serve as front loaders there's the ford 5000 but that's more of an old time front loader and doesn't really do it for everybody or most people actually so we we have four front loaders we have the case uh, or not the case. It is not the case. It is the IH-2350. You guys are telling me, stop calling it case IH. Yeah, it's an IH-2350 front loader. This came in the I I H. It's IH-986, actually. The 2350 is the front thing. This came in the IH-86 pack. Um, there's the John Deere. This is the 6150R. Um, it comes with its little front loader arm here. There's the Steyr 8080 Turbo. It has this gray front loader arm here. Okay. And then we had the Kamaz here. This is the Kamaz, what is this? The T215. It comes with this trailer that has extra wheels and fuel and a little diagnostic bench, apparently, that I can walk through. Well, whatever. And it also comes with the orange uh, Sigma, Sigma 4. Okay, well, what do we think? Well, here's the, the first thing is I'm going to give a mention to the, the Kamaz. Um, it's kind of derpy. It's kind of floppy. It's kind of wonky. I don't really like it, um, but it sort of functions, sort of. Um, that is also a very expensive $30,000 for that, just so you know. Um, so I'm not a big fan of the Kamaz. I'm going to give it a mention, though. It does function you're not going to be like thrown into space or anything that's good it doesn't crash my game either which is also good that leaves the Steyr the John Deere and the IH the IH the IH I'm going to get an give an honorable mention to here's my problem with the IH one it's kind of down on power which can be kind of a pain in the butt um two it doesn't exactly work well with course play. Yes, it works if you get out of it after you've set the course, but often you want to ride along in longer courses just to see how it behaves. That causes problems with the IH. Some of you say, oh yeah, that happens normally on course play. Well, it, the only time it's ever happened to me is in an IH. So I'm, I'm not a fan of the IH. Like if it worked perfectly with course play, I'd be uh, just a happy clam and I'd call it an award. 
because it has problems with course play, it's an honorable mention. And I will also say it is down on power. It can't climb up onto your silage mounds, which is kind of a pain in the butt when you need to use it to course your silage. Just so you know. The Steyr here, the Steyr is a fun little toy. I like it. It's neat. It works. It's got all kinds of little extras. Is it an award? Actually, yes, it is. It gets an award. It's more of like the classic tractor. I'm really not sure the age of a Steyr, but it does not look like a new tractor. I'm going to give it the classic tractor because my classic tractor category is kind of random anyway. I'm going to give it the award for classic tractor front loader. Because I like it, it works. I mean, look at the detail. They actually put the wires, the red and green wires, coming out of that and going into the um, harness there. I mean, that's some detail right there. And it's got all kinds of extras. Um, and it's just a fun, fun little tractor. And it's all-wheel drive, which means it will climb up over the, um, the silage pit. <clears throat> I don't think you need to guess that this, this John Deere here took the award for a uh, modern front-loader tractor. Um, this is, this is the, um, not quite insane version. Um, we only have, you know, a few hundred buttons. We can open our front bonnet if we really feel like it. Um, we only have a few hundred buttons, uh, on here. <laughs> Look at that. Nice front bonnet. Very nice bonnet. Um, instead of the, uh, the insane model, which is coming later. Um, but it's just... Wow, they did a lot of work. I mean, the fact that you've got all these linkages and all of this other other fun things, the back looks pretty. You can I mean, look, you can look right through. You can see the the chassis unit there. I mean, it's just well done overall. I mean, are there are there things that could be done better? Sure. But you'd have to be a serious serious tractor fanatic to say, "Well, this isn't a good tractor because something is wrong in like the modeling of this black piece here because I can look straight through. I mean, I, I'm picky, but I'm not that picky. <laughs> All right. So this, this is definitely, I think, our winner for the modern tractor front loader. The Steyr is our winner for the classic tractor front loader. I'm giving an honorable mention to the IH-86 and I'm giving a mention to the Kamaz, whatever that thing, T215. That's what it is. It's T215. See, I would remember. Um, the Cat 988H still takes it for the big front loaders and the Bobcat for the Bobcat front loaders because they don't have any competition. All right. We will go and find our next mod category. Welcome to the semis. Um, this is, uh, this is one of the craziest categories ever. Um, semis are always just a nutso category, uh, and they have been for the last two seasons. So, uh, man, season one was the easy one. Okay. Uh, we have, uh, this Peterbilt from the road train. We have the BMAC. We have the Kenworth Bullnose. We have the Kenworth Heavy Hauling Bullnose. We have the Kenworth K100. We have the Peterbilt Day Cab. We have, um, oh my goodness, this is the Peterbilt Flat Top Mod Contest winner. This is Scania from the Scania Pack. Uh, over here we have a Western Star. And over here we have the Kenworth um, Sleeper, 37379, three, three, whatever. We have a Kenworth Sleeper. There you go. Okay, so I... Yeah, this is this is always a struggle pack, a uh, struggle category. Let's let's go with. Um, well, first we'll point out the obvious, which is all of the um, the ones from Duke, as well as um, that one's from Duke via Looney or Looney via Duke, whatever. Um, then this this K one hundred and the Western Star over here, they all feel a little bit undersized in this uh in this particular thing um in this particular game they feel a little bit undersized but i don't think it's so undersized as to make it ridiculous um quarter, sort of my definition of being too undersized is if you parked one of these next to a harvester and the harvester dwarfed it 
it would be way too much. But none of these are terrible. I mean, the B-Max has always been a small truck. So, that in mind, we've got those. And kind of my thought here, the, I think I'm going to give a mention. Hmm. I'm going to give a mention to the K100. I think it's a decent enough vehicle. It just has too much clip in and, and just a little bit too much derpness going on. Um, yeah. Is this the one that had the weird? No. Um, yeah, it did have the weird interior. Yeah, I'm just going to give it a mention. I think it needs a little bit of polish, but I don't think it's terrible. Uh, same thing goes for the Western Star. It gets a mention mainly because, I mean, really, why do I have, why am I walking into that? Um, so I'm going to give a mention to those two. I'm also going to give a mention to this, uh, mod contest winner. I don't know. I don't know what it won exactly. It's extremely garishly blue. Um, I like blue, but my goodness, not this much. Uh, my other problem is that it, it just feels a little bit too much for um, for farm. I mean, it's got way too much going on on it. I wouldn't want to bring it out on the farm because then I'd be afraid I'd scratch my custom paint job or whatever. Um, so a mention for that. The same thing goes here for this one. Though I know this is a road train truck, the concept is still the same. It's way too, way too crazy for... Um, yeah, way, way too crazy for um, for me to want to put on the farm. Additionally, the camera's actually positioned in the wrong spot on this one. It's positioned too far forward to a point over the front where it shouldn't be. So uh, well, we're going to have a mention for that. Um, wow. I'm, I'm sort of at a loss with, with the rest of these. I think... As much as I'd rather, no, we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to give a mention to the, the two bull noses here. Uh, they work. They work. They work. They work. They work fine. They guzzle gas like nobody's business. And, and you know, they, the, apparently the, shot, the craftsmanship is really, really shoddy back when these were made um, for whatever reason. Um, they just don't have all the pizzazz that you could get from some. And I don't know. I... They're gas guzzlers, but they're cheap. Oh, are they cheap? I mean, this bull nose here saved my butt in season three because I didn't have any money, but it's cheap. Ah, mention, honorable mention, mention, honorable mention. Hmm. You know what? Let me make it honorable. I'm going to make it an honorable mention for the bull noses, uh, as well as the BMAC. I, I like the BMAC because it's just that different. Um, you're talking about an older truck. Uh, look at the interior. You got an eight ball out there. You got a lever. I mean, it's it's just a neat looking truck. And it also is, you know, all three of these, their paint job is so basic, so simple. And I'd be like, yeah, I'd totally drive these on the farm. Um, they are gas guzzlers. All three of them are just terrible gas guzzlers. So be aware of that. So honorable mentions for those. Um, mention for the Kenworth K100. Mention for that Western Star. Mention for that Peter, that orange Peterbilt there because it's got issues. A mention for the Looney flat top because it's just too blue and too painted up, just like that orange one for a farm. So that leaves this day cab here. It leaves the sleeper version of it over there, and it leaves the Scania. And I think... I think I'm going to give a three-way award. There's really no real difference between this day cab and the sleeper version. Um, I would I would almost say if I was out shopping for a, a semi on my farm, I go with the day cab because the chances of me needing the this cab the sleeper berth is pretty slim. But you know, if you want the sleeper cab, go for it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing really wrong with them. They do have the speed limiter when they're on the shop or in the farmyard, but you can sort of get over that with a little bit of, a little bit of know-how. 
And then this Scania is just a wonderful Scania. It works really well. They're not going to pull everything. If you need to pull everything, you're going to have to get this Bullnose Heavy Hauler. It will pull anything you got, and it's got the extra axles back there. Um, but I can't really see anything too wrong with the Peterbilt Day Cab, the Peterbilt Sleeper Cab back there, and the Scania. So I'm going to give them awards. Um, honorable mention to the two Kenworth Bullnoses and the BMAC. Mention to the rest of the crowd. So there you go. That's semis. I'm sure people are going to have plenty to say about that, but there you go. That's my opinion. <laughs> we'll be back with the next category. Welcome to another one of my made-up categories. This is the made-up category of multiple, um, and it really has two contenders. We have the Mercedes Unimog, and we have this uh, IFA L60. Um, the Mercedes Unimog comes with milk tanker and animal transport and round bale transport, after you guys told me it was round bales, uh, manure, overloader, regular hauler, and a service vehicle, which is great because this does everything that that big, overly expensive uh, tractor-trailer one does. So that's excellent. And then we have the Unimog, which has a front three-point, a back three-point. I can't get back there, and we'll talk about why. Um, and it's a really nice Unimog. It's a good piece of kit. Then we have the IFA. Um, it's a disaster. The truck itself is a disaster. Then look at this kit, all this equipment that comes with it. Yeah, I just bought it. That it literally was flipping around when I when I opened this up. That's why that is trying to mount the uh, Unimog. This looks derp over here. And then these three are just having some sort of crazy cluster going on over here. I don't know what exactly is happening. Um, but in this, there is a back piece for wheat crops. There's a back piece for silage crops. There's a sprayer, and there's a fertilizer. And then there's a trailer for silage, and then there's a trailer for grain. Um, they're all space vehicles, except for the truck itself, which takes a donkey's year to load because it is, loads a whole bunch of useless and unnecessary gubbins when it loads. I think based on just on me saying that, you can figure out exactly who gets the award. That would be the Mercedes. The Mercedes gets the award for the category of multiple because all of this equipment works. It does a good job. It is expensive to buy all this kit. Um, but if your farm can uh, handle the expense and the size, now some small farms, you're not going to be able to, to handle the size of the Unimog. Um, if you can handle the expense and the size, I think it's a really nice piece of equipment. Really allows you to do a bunch of things all at once, and that is excellent. Um, DIFA gets a, um, oh, I don't know. We'll call it a dishonorable mention. I mean, the stuff loads. It's about as much as I can say for it. Um, it it's just a dishonorable mention. It's just an absolute mess. It needs a lot of work. Uh, to start with, we need to get rid of the space equipment. That would be great. Um, and the truck itself just needs to be gone over a little bit. All right, there you go. The new category of multiple, because I make up a new category probably every single time I do one of these. But uh, award for the Unimog and all of its kit. A dishonorable mention for the IFA and all of its kit. We'll be back with our next mod category. Welcome to the relatively lonely category of Potato Harvester. Uh, this is the... Ooh, I don't even remember what this is. A vol Verlerner, Verlerner. Um, and it comes with heads for uh, tomato and gherkin would be cucumber. Um, it's got potato, sugar beet cutter. Um, this is a sugar beet topper, I think, and I think that's the potato topper. So you actually have to run it twice over the same thing, I believe. Um, it's derp. It accelerates a little bit too fast. It's just a little bit too not quite there. I mean, it physically is there. Well, no, it's not. Whoopsie. Can walk through its engine mount. Um, but uh, if you need to cut tomatoes and gherkins, then this would be a mod for you. But I don't. I don't like it. I. I used it once here on the mod spotlight and I never touched it again. And the reason is it just accelerates way too fast. It just feels too floppy. It doesn't feel like it's a solid piece of equipment. So I'm going to give it a dishonorable mention. Um, I think it could be fixed in the long term, but there's better stuff out there. I'm trying to find better stuff on the websites I prefer. 
So, uh, yeah. Just a uh, dishonorable mention, sadly. We'll, we have to continue our quest for a good new potato and sugar beet harvester. All right, we'll be back with our next mod category.